All right. Happy Friday, everybody. I know in the last podcast I said happy Friday, but it's still Friday for me. I'm sure you're not listening on this on a Friday. So happy whatever day you're listening to this episode on. Hope you guys are having a great one. Today is going to be a good episode. We got Donato Callahan from with us from uh, St. Louis over in the middle of the U.S., Donato has a lot of experience um, from wholesaling, small multifamily, commercial multifamily, you name it. He also is uh, the CEO of um, Bright Investor, which is an underwriting software that helps people visualize markets that they're getting into. We always talk about the first thing that we look at when we're finding or deciding on which property to buy. We look at the market. We want to see the data behind that. And so it sounds like this platform will uh, allow you to, uh, to make smart decisions on identifying good markets. Um, Donato, thank you very much for hopping on the show. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, I told you before we got on here, we like starting with stories. So take us to the beginning of your story. How'd you get started in real estate? Yeah, I got started because I was bored out of my mind during (laughs) COVID-19. I was sitting at home like everyone was, and I realized that the money that I had in the stock market lost half its value. And I wasn't in control You've all of that. been there, buddy. No problem. <laughs> yeah, all been there. And I asked that question every person does is there has to be a better way. And what is it? So I started looking into real estate and that's where I found wholesaling. So I spent my entire uh, end of college getting into wholesaling. And after doing that for about a year, I said, I want to do something that I can buy once and have pay me multiple times to have more benefits around it. So I quickly transitioned into multifamily. I ended up closing on a four four family uh, house hack here in St. Louis. And right after that, started getting involved in a commercial multifamily syndication seriously. Uh, A year after that, closed our first 172 unit building in Waco, Texas. And now we're under contract on another 120 unit in Arlington, Texas that we're raising money for. And overarchingly, uh, while working on commercial multifamily, got into uh, real estate market research and I love the process and ended up creating a bright investor over the last almost two years. Nice, man. I love it. Um, so yeah, I, I like when people get started with house hacking, I wish I got started later, later in life. Um, but I wish I had started house hacking, like in college, it's such a good idea. You just get a house, you buy it and you rent each room to your buddies. Um, it's fun cause you're living with your buddies, but you also get the rental income. So I I'm always jealous when I hear of house hacking. Um, sounds like you got out on the right foot. Uh, so there's a lot of ways we can go into this. I really want to talk about your, uh, bright investor. I want to talk about markets because that's one of the things that we always look at when we're first getting into this. But before we do that, let's talk about your multifamily. Um, you got two of them. Sounds like a big one in Waco and Arlington now. Uh, and this is, doesn't sound like you made any transitory deals before this. Usually people start in the small, you know, 10 to 20, then 20 to 50 and then 50 to hundred. You guys went straight up. Um, so tell us how'd you find it, how'd you structure it, who who'd you partner with? Um, just give us the the dirty details about that that first deal out there in Waco. Sure. So I ended up being invited to be a part of a multifamily education network. Uh, at a, my old landlord in college was joining it, and she said, "I know you're a smart guy. Why don't you come and do it with me? Let's go ahead and try it out." And I ended up helping put together a six person team where we were finding deals, underwriting them, doing market research, capital raising. And we spent maybe six to seven months looking at 96 different deals until we finally found one that worked right. And when we had finally found that deal that worked right, we partnered with a sponsorship group that had done at that point in time, maybe about 3,500 units worth of volume, close to $300 million in assets. And we got to know them really well. We became close friends with them. They said, we want to work with you guys in your next deal. So we partnered with them, leveraged their connections and their uh, on the ground boots and um, on the on the ground contractor connections and that's uh, property management. And we ended up providing all the value to them as far as we're going to do the we're going to be the uh, arms and legs of the operation. You, the sponsor, you be the brain. And we just took all that load off of them until we closed our first one in July. And so last of 2022. And so that structure looked like a typical GPLP split uh, for the syndication. So 70% of it was owned by limited partners, which was the passive investors. 30% of it on the GP side or general partners for the actual operators of the deal. Um and we did that through a 506B offering. So we raised money from credited, uh, accredited and non-accredited investors. Um, and I think that one was a $15, $5 million purchase price, 172 units, great location. 
And what I do on the team is I do the market research and due diligence. So I am answering the question of why are we buying in this state, this city, this zip code, this street, and what's going on around us? What are the comps charging? What are the amenities? What are, what's our loss to lease? What rent premiums can we command? What, the, what are the trends of projections going on nearby? So that the, by the time that our boots on the ground people show up to the property, every time they go, they go to a property that I've worked on, my goal is for them to say, wow, this area is fantastic. I love it. I can't believe this property you know, is out there. This deal is out there for us to take down. We love this. It's going to be fantastic. And I've been very fortunate in the last ones that, we, that since we've been working with this new team, uh, that's what the experience has been. That by the time that I'm finished with my work and I sell into a property, it's, oh my gosh, yes, we're doing this. And that's my goal. Cool, man. I love to hear that. And for any of you guys out there listening, you're thinking about getting into real estate, you, you just got in, maybe you did your first wholesale. I think there's a good lesson here in partnerships. Um, when you're just getting started, you don't have the experience, but if you can go out there and find somebody, as you mentioned, you brought in the brain, you found somebody who has the experience. If you can partner with them to take down bigger deals, um, you can bring in the grunt work, bring in the, you know, the dirty getting out there, getting things done kind of uh, mentality. Um, if you partner that, you can get bigger deals done. And that's, you know, it's always better to do bigger deals because they're just as hard as the smaller deals. And so might as well go big. So love to hear that. Sounds like you guys did it right. Um, Waco, I love, uh, I love Texas. We were Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth is the big area that we're trying to do in. We got two self storage out there right now. We're just trying to buy more, but it's really hard to good, find good deals out there. Um, it's just, Texas is just, uh, just blowing up. Um, so yeah, I like, uh, like the structure you guys did. Let's talk about underwriting. I love underwriting. I love data. Um, sounds like you guys built your platform first. Give us a brief overview of Bright Investor, what does it do, and uh, and why did you guys decide to make one for yourself? Yeah, so Bright Investor was born in a necessity. Um, real estate market research is something that is crucial to every single property that you'll ever buy. And it's why the golden rule of real estate is location, location, location. Because everything that surrounds your property that you can't control, like crime, population growth, job growth, demand, all of those things will determine if your property is going to build wealth or it's going to be, you know, potentially buying in a war zone. It's going to lose you money. And I've so been I was spending, <laughs> yeah, right. You've been there. And we, I completely understand when it comes to people getting started in real estate. If you're trying, if you're in a high cost of living market, if you are someone who is trying to be able to get, get into the game of real estate, but you have no idea where you should be buying and you're hesitant to put that down payment down because you've never been somewhere, how are you able to make those decisions when other people have institutional quality data that costs them half a million dollars a year to get, how can you compete? So after spending you know, six hours at a time working on a property, doing all the market research, going to all the different sites, trying to save money, not sure, not being sure if I can trust the data or not, this need for Bright Investor became very apparent. And so we decided to take institutional quality data from the world's most trusted data providers, put it all in one platform at a fraction of the cost, and then display it on easy to read maps so that anyone can be investing in real estate and know what's happening on the ground. So they invest in the best locations possible. Nice, man. Yeah, it sounds great. And I, I personally can speak about the importance of knowing your location and not even, it's not even just about a city. It's ta I'm talking about, you need to know the block that you're investing in because sometimes yeah. these listings out there, or maybe you're talking with a seller and you're just enticed by those cap rates. You see like a, a 10 cap, mm -hmm. a 12 cap, and you're like, Ooh, I have to buy it. It's such a good deal. But then you close on it and you realize that property crime in that area is just horrendous. You're getting broken into every single day. It's uh, and I'm speaking from experience. This happened with the self storage that I bought. Um, so the lesson there is that you need to know data about where you're investing and it needs to be very specific to the location that you're investing in. Um, so I'm just saying, I, I understand why you guys built this. It sounds like a really good tool. Um, uh, where is this already out there? Can people already start subscribing to it? Yeah, we launched it just under three months ago. Uh, it's on brightinvestor.com and we are adding more and more features every single month. Uh, it's actually have a big, we have a big release coming out in about two weeks from now. We're really excited for it. But you can see things like population and job growth and also things you're talking about, crime data. So mm -hmm. we actually show you on a pin by pin level, a heat map around any property that you're interested in buying and it's showing you exactly what crimes are happening around it. 
Yeah. So they, um, you avoid that. So you, you avoid that situation of like, hey, I think this area is great. And you show up and it's like, oh, I cannot believe that I just spent however many millions of dollars to buy this property. Uh, and I just pulled this up and I swear, guys, they're not paying me for this. I'm, this is uh, this is me just talking. Um, but it does seem like a really good price. It looks like your guys' basic uh, basic you know, package starts at 50 bucks a month, um, which is pretty, pretty reasonable. So looks like a great thing. You guys should check it out. Um, but we're not here to, to sell your, your product though. It does sound like uh, it will sell itself. Um, tell me about the metrics that you guys like to see when you're deciding on your, you know, the Metro that you want to, to invest in. What are the, For sure. give me like the top three key metrics that you want to see. Sure. So we actually coined the term market recap. So R-E-C-A-P. I'm looking at rent, employment, crime, appreciation, population. Oh, nice. So rent, yeah. So rent first and foremost. There's also oh, there's there's deeper dives you can go into, which I recommend. But high level, if you got like five minutes, and you need to know something. Do a market recap. So rent. If I'm buying a property and I know that my estimates for my my all in cost and monthly basis are going to be two thousand dollars, I need to know what the rents are nearby. So I'm getting into a property that at least breaks even, ideally cash flow, so I can cap. So I have the ability to pay for the property as it appreciates with a real wealth being built. I have to check local rents. And not just local rents like in the 20 miles around me, but specifically one to two miles around me with like properties, with like square footage, structure, floor plans, beds, baths, age, checking rents. Second, employment. So I'm looking to see what industries are active in that marketplace and how are they growing? So if I'm buying in an oil town, for example, maybe in Southwest Texas, and it's primarily like 80% of the people that are working in oil, like when oil Odessa goes or down, like that. Yeah. exactly. I was just looking at a deal in Odessa like two days ago. People were asking me if I would invest there, and I said absolutely not. Yeah, because I've seen that. Uh, people send me because uh, we we buy mobile home RV parks too, and I've seen really good deals there. But that's the exact reason I do not invest in Odessa is because, like, I mean, who knows? It might not be around in a couple of years. <laughs> exactly, and like, I, it's amazing you brought that up. If you are buying somewhere where most of the population is dependent on an industry. That as soon as oil goes to $30 a barrel, they all have no jobs and they cannot pay or they can afford your rents. You're the one that loses out and your investors are going to be pissed at you. So I need to know that I'm buying an area that has places like healthcare, private industry, information, technology, education, government, sizable, stable industries that provide the incomes necessary and uh, the reliability that I'm not going to be left out, you know, crying when uh, oil uh, tanks. Third is crime. So REC, crime. No one wants to buy in a war zone. No one wants to live in a war zone. Property values don't go up in a war zone. Simple as that. I want to make sure the property that I'm buying is not somewhere where I'm seeing overwhelming amounts of property or violent crime that could dissuade a prospective renter or home buyer from doing a flip or anyone that might want to store the things there. Fourth, appreciation. Property values, are they trending up or are they trending down? And if they're trending down, by how much, for how long, and by what kind of property uh, type? So I'm going to bite in the areas that are seeing consistent increase in value. That usually means that people are moving there for a variety of reasons, or something's drawing them in, or there's a lot of redevelopment activity there. And if I buy somewhere that's appreciating at 3% per year, or a couple of zip codes away, an area is appreciating at 10% per year, just naturally speaking, I will lose tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in my net worth by buying in a zip code that's not appreciating as well as its neighbors are. Lastly, population, super, super simple. If people are leaving, you have higher competition to attract your renters. And that typically means lower rent prices so that you can attract someone in. So I wanna be buying in areas that have at least a 10% uh, increase in population you know, over the past decade, at least. So Interesting. At least ten percent. That's uh, I generally just like to see a positive net migration. Um, if it's you know if it's near if it's zero, I mean if it's below zero, it's uh out of the question. But if it's you know if it's in the two to five range, I'll still consider a property even even though it's not like double digits. Interesting. I like the hundred thousand hundred thousand people minimum with ten thousand with ten percent increase over the past decade. Uh, that for me literally uh capitulates or kind of I guess uh, capitalizes yeah. on the uh growth of what I intend to see happening over the coming years. Like an area like, for example, Lubbock, Texas, I think there's about a quarter million people there. It's growing very quickly, but you're not having the price per door of a place like Dallas-Fort Worth necessarily. I really like that market. 
It has a lot of people. It's growing really quickly. And then places like Waco and Murillo, San Angelo, I like the growth that's happening there. Um, so doing your market recap, R-E-C-A-P, rent, employment, crime, appreciation, population, top five things to check out before you buy a property at the very least. Yep. We, I actually just sold a, a self-storage facility out in Lubbock. Um, and the reason is because Lubbock's uh, net rentable square feet per capita is just through the roof for self-storage. Mm -hmm. So do you guys do things like uh, market saturation for different in, um, asset types or is it are you just looking at the generics of the Metro and not specific to the asset? So we're adding more and more features to the actual platform. So one that we're coming out with relatively soon is going to be absorption rates for different asset classes. So we can showcase what's on the market. How is it, you know, what's the demand look like for those things? And we're leaning more into the actual property side here over the next month or two. So we're starting, we have a lot of the market level dynamics. We have street level block by block level information. And now we're bringing in all the property information too. So you can start comparing what the comps look like, where the sales prices were, what's that PSQ look like all on one platform. Cool, man. Love it. All right. Well, hey, I love what you said so far. And by the way, I like that you guys make a, made an acronym out of it. It makes it so much easier to remember. Recap, rent, employment, crime, appreciation, population, something that we, that'll stick in the brain. So uh, good one there. Um, it is, uh, we've gone through our time though. So it's time to jump into the quick question round. Are you ready? Do it. Let's do it. Starts with books, any for any form of education. I just need two recommendations. Give me one for general life wisdom and then one for real estate or business. Uh, one, I'd say Who Not How by Stan Sullivan. All, talks about you know leveraging the skill sets of other people and then being a person that other people can leverage as well. Um, on top of that, I would also recommend uh, Traction. So mm -hmm. it talks about the EOS model and how you can structure a business and an organization to be really effective. Nice. Love it. All right. Next question is for your younger self. So let's go back to the Donato who was uh, sitting there during COVID kind of twiddling his thumbs, thinking about uh, what the next step would be. Go to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Be the person that shows up, is reliable and ask questions on a consistent basis. And you will go further than you ever thought possible. Nice. Good advice. All right, next one is for your business. The first three positions you hire for form the foundation of your business. So what were they for you? And would you do it differently if you did it again today? So first for the positions were my co-founder, COO, um, project developer or project manager, and then our development team. And being a software, you know, that's absolutely critical that we have the absolute best people working on the actual development of the platform. So it's not only easy to use, but it's high quality, the function's great, the data is fantastic. So I would not change that for the world because that was the lifeblood of our business. Nice. All right. This next one is specifically for you because you guys are all about metros. So the United States, it's a big place, a lot of opportunity out there. Give me the metro you're most excited about investing in today. Oh, it's like picking a favorite child. Oh man, that's difficult. Uh, I would say I'm very interested in, uh, man, I really like Waco and San Antonio and Arlington, Texas. I okay. really like those areas. The Texas Triangle, except for Austin. Yeah, you, did. you didn't mention Austin. <laughs> I did not mention Austin because no, I think it's a little too hot for me. Uh, yeah. little, little, get a little pricey, uh, a little too much heat. So no, I'm staying out of Austin for now. Um, I got some, I got my eye on some markets uh, outside the state too, places in Ohio and Tennessee specifically as well as South Carolina. Uh, I've got my eye on, but as far as where I'm most excited about, it's those three in Texas. Yep. Texas is crushing it. All right. Next question is about finding deals. It all starts with the acquisition. So what's your favorite way of generating leads? On the commercial multifamily side, identifying the largest brokers, finding a junior to mid-level broker in that organization calling them, developing a relationship with them. And it took us over a year to do that. But finding the right person who we showcase that we're going to keep showing up and when they have a deal, we're going to underwrite it, get it back to them and show them why we like it or we don't like it. Once you've earned their trust, as soon as we closed our first deal in Waco, we had five more in Waco within a week that people were saying, we know you can buy here and we know that you're proven. Here's some assets that are nearby. And that just opens the floodgates. Yep. All right. Uh, next question is about mentors. None of us are islands. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. So give me one mentor who significantly contributed to your career today. I want to give a shout out to Corby Goad uh, in Boise. 
he was he's very active in the bigger pockets community and he was a realtor and property managed commit company owner that when I was getting started and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, he went and he'd meet up with me, walk properties, uh, answer questions, pull MLS comps for me. And uh, I love to give him a lot of credit because he was one of the first people that was actually experienced in the industry that was dedicated to helping me get that first uh, you know, foot on uh, the gas pedal to moving it forward. So uh, big shout out to Corby. Yeah. Shout out to Corby. Thanks for helping Donato get to where he is. Leads us to the last question. This is for the listeners. You've given us a lot to think about. I'm sure people want to reach out, get in contact with you, learn a little bit more about Bright Investor. So what's the best way for them to do that? Sure. So you can check us out online at www.brightinvestor.com. Uh, you can also follow us on social media at official, uh, official Bright Investor. And you can reach out to me personally on Instagram uh, at Donato Callahan. And happy to get in touch with you to talk market research and all the things I love about real estate. Sweet. I'll put those links in the show notes. So if y'all want to reach out to Donato or check out Bright Investor, um, you just click a little more in the description. It'll pull down the full description and in there you can find those links. So Donato, that wraps it up. Thank you very much for hopping on the show. You got it. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. For everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe, at the Real Estate Investing Club.com. And if you guys want to support the show, all we ask is you give us a like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.